For the following exercises, find the average rate of change of each function on the interval specified. All right, so the first thing is you want to interpret this term as meaning the slope. All right, the average rate of change of a function is indeed the slope. Well, the slope of what? The slope of the function or the slope of two points that are on that particular function well, it turns out to be the second case, right? I have the nice little not definition, but just a way to think about average rate of change. And it's simply the slope of a straight line that connects any two points of a function. So for example, pretend you had a graph that kind of looked, I don't know, like this or something, right? Your parabola. And let's say you wanted to find the average rate of change, all right, from this point to this point. All you have to do is this. You can draw your line and then you find the slope of this line that connects these two points, all right? So you find the slope of this line. Simple, how do you find the slope of a line? We have a nice little formula down here, right on the bottom left, right? Change in Y over change in X. That's literally as simple as this is. The only thing is they didn't give us a graph, they didn't give us a picture, but they gave us the mathematical function, okay? But just keep this in mind. I'm gonna leave the formula, I'm gonna leave this picture on up and this is basically what we're doing, okay? This, as you can see, is a cubed, function. So this function will have a different shape of it. You know, there's a parabola, I just chose something, but the concept is the same. So what they gave us here is they gave us a particular function. Remember, interpret this as simply saying y. Okay, so this is like saying y is equal to 3x cubed minus 1. And what they did was they gave us this interval. Remember, in terms of interval notation, these represent x values. So they basically gave us two x values. I'll call this first one x1, and I'll call that second one x2. So now we're thinking, well, wait, if I have to find the average rate of change, which is simply the slope, I could probably use this formula, right? That the slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And you're saying, oh, look, wonderful. They gave me the x values, but wait a minute, they didn't give me the y values. So now what, you, what happens is your thought process changes. You don't say, let me find the slope. You say, let me find what the y values are because you know, according to this formula, that if you know all of these variables, you know then the slope. So I'm thinking about, can I take the given information, meaning that I have an x value and another x value, and can I find their corresponding y values? And I say, oh my goodness, yes we can. Why? Because they gave us the function. All right, so let's do that. So let's rewrite the function, okay? I'm gonna write y is equal to three x cubed minus one. Now I'm only gonna put a little subscript of one here, call it y1 and call this one x1, all right? Because I have two x's, so I just wanna be specific, all right? So we'll say that y1 will now equal three times the value of x1, and we called x1 the negative three. That'll be cubed and minus one, okay? So now when we do this out, it's gonna be three, then multiplied now by, we have negative three cubed, and negative times a negative times a negative will be negative. Three times three times three will be 27, okay? And that's gonna be minus one. And now what we need to do, right, is now we're going to simply do this multiplication on out, three times a negative 27, right, which would simply be, looks like 81. Okay, negative 81 that is. Then we're gonna subtract one from it. And we have now y1 will be equal to then negative 82. Okay, so this is the y1 value. So what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna write down those coordinates, okay? x1 was negative three, and then y1 was negative 82. Okay, great, so I have this point, right? That represents a point on the graph. Uh, it's not this point specifically, all right? I'm just using this as a illustration, but I think you get the picture. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing for y2 now, okay? So rewrite your uh, function. So y will be equal to three x cubed minus one. Again, I'm gonna put a little two here and a little two here because I'm calculating the y2 value from the x2 value. So this is gonna be three. Now multiplied but excuse me, by my x2 value, which is three, that's cubed minus one, 
y2 would be equal to 3, then multiply by 27, and this is going to be minus 1. And here now, lo and behold, we're going to have y2 being equal to 81 again, minus 1, and this time it is a value of 80. All right, so now I have those th that particular point, all right? I have the second point now. So this is going to be the x value is 3, the y value is 80. And now I have my two points. So now I can calculate my slope. So let's plug them in now. We said that this was the y2 value, that was 80, minus then the y1 value, which is negative 82. Oops, don't forget to plug, you know, with parentheses here. And then divide that by now, your x2 value, which was 3, minus then your x1 value, which was negative 3. Okay. So they're trying to trick you here a little bit. I mean, you could have done it the other way too, and you, know, you got double negatives in here, but that's not a big deal. All right, so this is really like saying 80 plus 82. And that looks like it's gonna be 162. Divided then by, now we're going to have three plus three, that is six. And now we can simply reduce this on down, right? So instead of racking my, my head for a second, Maybe it should be what? What should that be like? So this is going to be 162 over 6 and 27, just to make sure I don't make a silly mistake. And there it is. All right, so that's the slope. That's the average rate of change for the first function. Now let's do the second one. All right, let's run through this. Again, same concept. They give us the x values. We'll call this one x1, uh, x2. And now what I have to do is find the corresponding y values. Right, so we'll rewrite the function. y is equal to one over x. And since I'm gonna calculate y1, I'm gonna use x1 here. So now y1 will be equal to one over x1, which we called one. And this is, I mean, right, the math here should be simple. This is one. So now you have the coordinate of one comma one, all right, the x, y coordinate here. All right, great. Let's do the same thing for the second x. So here we have y is equal to one over x, just rewriting the function. I'm gonna put a little two down here to remember that we're talking about y2 now because we're gonna input x2. x2 was three, and there's really nothing I can reduce here, right? I mean, I could write it as a decimal, but I'm just gonna leave it as a fraction. Uh, so what we have here now is we're gonna have the coordinate of three comma one over three, right? The x comma y value. And now, lo and behold, we have the two points. Anytime you have two points on a graph, you can always calculate the average rate of change because it's simply the slope between these two points. All right? So let's do it. Slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's plug it on in. So y2 was one third minus then our, uh, x, uh, excuse me, y1 value, which was one. And that will then be now over uh, x2, which is three, and then subtracted from x1, which is one. So now when we simplify this, the numerator, we're going to get a negative two thirds, it looks like, right? Negative two over three. And now divided by, we're gonna have three minus one, which is simply two, all right? Now from here, uh, if you have trouble seeing the division, remember, you can always take the numerator of this complex fraction and multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator. You might say, well, wait a minute, where's the, where's the reciprocal of two? But remember, this is just two over one. So what I can do is I can basically write this, the numerator fraction of negative two over three times now the reciprocal of the denominator fraction of one over two. And this is exactly how the math works out. So you notice now the twos will cancel. Do not do a cross multiplication here. This is not when you can do a cross multiplication. You're only allowed to do a cross multiplication if you had two fractions here separated by an equal sign, but that's a multiplication sign. So the twos again will cancel here and we're left with then negative one third, right? And that is it, negative one over three. And that's the average rate of change, ladies and gentlemen. So I hope this video helped. If it did, please help us out and tell your friends. All right, we'd appreciate it so much. And we look forward to helping you with the next problem. Take care.